continuing on with section 11.1 vector operations. The vector u plus v is also called the resultant vector. Now remember that when we get to some of the applications of force where we want to find the resultant force. Um, find the resultant vector, you're going to simply add the two vectors together. Geometrically, suppose we have these two vectors u and v. When we add them together, we the result is a new vector. That's the dark line there. And it's found geometrically by taking the um, terminal point of u, starting the vector v. It's like picking up this vector v and placing it where it begins at the terminal point of u, and then starting at the initial point of u to the terminal point of v, we have this this longer vector, our resultant vector, and um, or you could take start with vector v and add vector u to it. We get an equivalent vector. That's called the resultant vector when you're adding two vectors together. Here are some examples. Uh, given vector v that has components negative two five and vector w that has components three four, find each of the vectors. Now you can pause the video now. Try this quickly on your own and then restart the video so that you can check your answers. Part A. All right, to find the solution to one half vector v, you're going to multiply each of the components of vector v by one half. And the result is a vector with components negative one and five halves. For part B, we want to take vector w and subtract vector v. You take the components of w and subtract the components of v. And what that looks like is a vector that has components 5, negative 1. And then for part c, we want to take vector v and add 2 times vector w. So you take 2 times w, which has components 6, 8, and then you add vector v to that. Add the components together, simplify the result to get a vector, a new vector that has components 4, 13. Here are some additional operations or properties of vector operations. We, we have, for example, number 1 is a commutative property. u plus v is equal to v plus u. Uh, the associative property, and so on. You can take the time to go through those on your own and see how they relate to the homework assignments. Now, this theorem is important. Often we're asked to find a vector that goes in the same direction as another vector, but it's only one unit long. That's called a unit vector in the direction of v. Suppose we have a vector v that's five units long, and we want to find another vector that goes in the same direction, but it's only one unit long. The way we do that is simply by dividing the vector by its magnitude. You're cutting it down in size. So vector u is a unit vector, has length 1. It's bound by taking v and dividing the components of vector v by the magnitude of vector v. So 1 divided by um, the magnitude of v times our vector v. Okay, here are some additional examples. I'll work through these with you. We want to find vector u where P, the initial point is 2, 3, and the terminal point is Q1. Again, you can pause the video now, try these on your own, and then refer back to the video to check your solution. Let's look at this one. Now, to find the components of a vector U, you're going to take the um, terminal point and subtract the initial point. So we're going to take negative 1 the terminal point, the ending point, x value, and we're going to subtract the initial point, negative 1 minus 2, and then 2 minus 3. Simplify the result, and we get negative 1 minus 2 is negative 3, 2 minus 3 is negative 1. So the vector u, and it's in bold, print here, but when you handwrite it, you use that vector notation, has components negative 3, negative 1. Now what that looks like when you're graphing it, you can do a quick sketch here of a point 2, 3, 
for vector v, uh, sorry, point P, and negative 1, 2 as our point Q. And this vector U goes from P to Q. Now the components of that vector are negative 3, negative 1. And what that corresponds to is a horizontal displacement and a vertical displacement. So from the initial point, you would move negative 3, that's 3 units to the left, and then down 1 unit. So think of this as kind of a, a triangle here. The first component is your horizontal displacement. The second component is your vertical displacement. Okay, let's look at the second one. If we want to find vector v, where the points, the initial point is 3, negative 2, and the terminal point is 2, 4. That vector can be found by taking the coordinates of the termin terminal point and subtracting the initial point. So we're going to have 2 minus 3, and then 4 minus a negative 2. Don't forget those negatives. And when you simplify the results, oops, let's go back. What did I do? Okay, sorry about that. Uh, when we go back, uh, when we simplify this, our vector has components negative 1 and 4 minus negative 2 is a positive 6. Now what I want you to do in addition to this, it's not listed on the PowerPoint here, but suppose I wanted to find a vector that is one unit long. Find a unit vector that goes, sorry about that. Oops. Let's find a unit vector Sorry about that, I appear to be having some technical difficulties here. Let's find a unit vector, which is vector v divided by its magnitude of the vector v. Well, let's first find vector, the, the magnitude of vector v is found by taking the square root of each of the components squared. That will be negative 1 quantity squared plus 6 quantity squared. And when you simplify that, you get 1 plus 36, or 37, the square root of 37. So a unit vector that is going in the same direction as vector v, but only one unit long, is um, found by taking the components of the vector v, negative 1, 6, and dividing it by its magnitude, square root of 37. And that is going to look like negative 1 over the square root of 37, as the first component, and 6 over the square root of 37 as the second component. Now, that's, that vector is one unit long, and it's going in the same direction as vector v. Right, let's continue with this section looking at standard unit vectors. Now, the unit vectors with components 1, 0, and 0, 1 are called the standard unit vectors. And we, are, we denote those by i and j. i, the standard unit vector, is one unit long, goes just to the right, and j is one unit long, goes vertical. Those i and j, and then eventually in the next section, we're going to talk about the standard unit vector k. Now, what we're saying is that every vector can be written as a linear combination of these unit vectors, i and j. So it just gives us another way of expressing vectors. And the way you find a vector using i and j, if you have the components v1 and v2, well, you take v1, that's your first component, write it with an i, and your second component, j. Let's look at an example here. Let u be the vector with initial point 2, negative 5, and terminal point negative 1, 3. And v is the vector using 2i minus j. Write each vector as a linear combination of i and j. Well, u goes from the point 2, negative 5 to the terminal point 1, negative 1, 3. So this is our formula for finding the components of a vector. Again, take the terminal point minus the initial points, 
and when you simplify, you get the components negative 3, 8. To write those as a linear combination of i and j, you simply eliminate the angle brackets and replace with i and j using a plus sign. This is negative 3 times i vector plus 8 times a j vector. Now let's look, try, actually try example B on your own, pause it, and then come back to the video to confirm your answers. For part B, we want 2u minus 3v. We're going to multiply the vector 2, I'm sorry, vector u by 2, and then we're going to subtract 3 times v vector. We already found vector u in part A, multiply the components by 2, and then we're going to subtract 3 times the vector v. We can simplify the results using the distributive property and combining like terms to get the result negative 12i plus 19j. Okay, for this example, we want to find a vector if we're given the magnitude and the angle from the positive x-axis. Anytime you have the magnitude and the angle, you can express it as a vector v where it's equal to the magnitude times the cosine of the angle theta and the sine of the angle theta. Find the components of the vector given the angle and the magnitude. So what this vector looks like if you want to sketch, do a quick sketch here is that the angle from the positive x-axis is the angle pi over 6. So you're, imagine a vector where this angle here this angle is your angle theta, which is equal to pi over 6. And the magnitude of this vector is 5 units long. We want to find the components, the horizontal and the vertical components of the vector. To do that, we can use this formula where vector v is equal to its magnitude. We know the magnitude is 5 times the angle bracket, the component form, of cosine of the angle theta, or cosine of pi over 6, times the sine of the angle theta, which is the sine of pi over 6. And when you simplify, those are standard angles on the unit circle. You should have those, hopefully, memorized. The cosine of pi over 6 is the square root of 3 over 2, and the sine of pi over 6 is 1 half. Now you can distribute that 5, so you can get the components 5 square root of 3 over 2, uh, comma 5 over 2. That's using the component form. Now if you wanted to write it using the i and j vectors, that would be 5 square root of 3 over 2i plus 5 over 2j.